for me, that's connected to the idea of networking. I know as, as a young person, I'd say I'll probably all through my 20s and probably part of my 30s as well, networking was this thing that people created at events and you were supposed to go to them and then meet a bunch of strangers in a very awkward way and and eat really like cheap, bad food that was mainly made of carbs and awkwardly get around this environment and somehow advance your career that way. It just seems like the most asinine thing I've <laughs> like ever heard of, but people still, I mean, people, that's what you do. Right. And I think in actuality, networking is really all about finding your community. I was thinking we'd talk about community and how you build a creative community, what that means to you. And gosh, there's just so many ways this can go in terms of conversation. Does anyone have any immediate thoughts about that? And then I'll, I'll continue on after. My thoughts are I'm absolutely awful at it. And I don't know. I don't know. Awful at networking or awful at building a community or both? Or what do you think? Both. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really, like in terms of music, I don't really have a community. <laughs> this is me. This is me. Um, but I think, like, I, I like I like when you're at things and you unexpectedly network. I like that. Yeah. Like, But going to things to network, I can't do it. I mean, I just can't do it. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not my bag. I mean, we kind of met um, that, not at a networking event, but we kind of yeah, met it, at the natural version of what you just described the natural yeah, yeah. that's fine and, and most of those people are genuine people and they're people you keep around but in terms of music i like in my music career i don't know it's not really a thing i do or have done or i don't even have a music community i mean there's people i stay loosely connected to because we get along but i don't i don't yeah no i don't i'm, I'm a loner when it comes to that you know yeah I get that. I was actually wondering about that for you specifically, because I know that you do a lot of this now, now you're being a soloist, like a solo singer songwriter and having moved in that direction. And then also um, just the way I know that you approach your, your art and the way you approach your community. I was curious what you would say in this regard, because you make friends yeah, I mean, easily. I, I, yeah. I'm not a good um, example <laughs> <laughs> because I make friends easily when it's not, it's when there's, it's not forced or it's not like I can I can get along with people when I don't feel like they're looking for something and I don't feel like I'm looking for something. But as soon as you put that aspect to it, I can't do it. I just bail. It's not my thing. Yeah. I don't like a person feeling like I'm only talking to them because I'm networking and I'm trying to get it's just disingenuous and it's not it's not my thing. And I don't really need it either. I don't feel like I need to do that. So I don't do it. Mm hmm. I guess that's my point in that I don't yeah, think it's that's... It's not natural. I don't enjoy it. It's not fun. Yeah. I don't think that's truly how... Ne well, okay. Networking is whatever you make it. But for me, I don't think that's truly how networking works. I think that the most genuine sort of fruitful ways would be what you described, where it happens sort of naturally and you're just in environments that you're around like like-minded people that don't necessarily need to be in your direct community either. I think that's okay. Because it's, I always thought it was funny as an actor, people that wanted to network a lot with other actors who identified only as actors, <laughs> because I wasn't exactly sure how that was going to benefit anybody per se, unless you were banding together and creating things outside of everyone just wanting to be an actor and you're willing to like create work and maybe do some writing, maybe do some producing, maybe do some directing, maybe create something that w everyone can participate in, but with everyone going in looking for something from someone else as an actor with other actors just didn't quite make sense to me. So it's almost like, what is your community? And is it that obvious? Like, is it that direct? I think it's not. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think I like, I experimented with that um, thing, you know, like a, you, we go to those red carpets. Sure. You know, you came with me to yeah. a few, you know, like I've done it the odd time I've tried to experiment with that, but I just feel like it's very forced. I feel like the people that are at those types of events 
are there just to talk about themselves and you're kind of there just to talk about yourself and it's just all disingenuous. It's all just nasty and it's not my thing. I think the only thing I like about those things is like, you know, take your few pictures for your Instagram and run. You know, that's, that's pretty much it. The only thing I get out of those. Right. It's like to be seen, just to go and be seen. What do you think, Kyle? Um, I think, uh, I mean, I agree with you how networking is a, kind of a dirty word. I, and, I, and I like how you, this is the, in the same breath as building a art, like an artistic community. And I, I, just for me, I think that's what like it all comes down to is just kind of finding your people, just kind of finding your tribe who are going to like inspire you and who are like and who you're inspired by and kind of like getting to know those people as artists like I think that's really what it comes down to is because everyone is so very special and you do when you start branching out and just meeting other artists whether it be in your chosen field or another chosen field doesn't matter we're all trying to create something and so to kind of go into their world is it's particularly inspiring and you just start to make friends. You start to build relationships with people and you start to realize that there's these puzzle piece connectors that, oh, you know, you're looking for this. Well, I know somebody who's actually do like doing this really well. They happen to be a buddy and they happen to be really good. So you guys should totally like, you should connect. And then it's just about like helping to make those connections because, you know, making art is very hard. There's a lot of things that go along with it and we're all just trying to make our visions and our world. So, you know, to kind of help build that energy, especially for artists that you believe in and that who you care about and they're, you know, and you're uh, hopefully they're your friends. I think that's where it all comes down to. And then from there, like you're just I I really, really think that if you're putting that out there in the world, you're doing a lot of good and good. And this shouldn't be the impetus, but good things will happen. And, you know, you just you kind of build off of each other and that can't be a bad thing. So I think when it comes to the new kind of networking, for me, that's how like I've met a lot of people that I collaborate with and that have helped me out was just they were friends or they they knew they had a friend that they knew who did what I needed. Um, And they were kind enough and nice enough to kind of put those puzzle pieces together. And I've hopefully reciprocated in some way, or I'm sure I will reciprocate in some way because I appreciate those people and I'll remember those people forever. I mean, for me, that's a, that's a healthier way of, of networking. I agree. I think it's all about connections. Like it becomes about not connections, but connecting, like finding who you connect with, like as a human. And then from there, like not only will that, like if you do, want to work together like not only will that experience be so much better because you'll be treating each other with like the utmost respect because you connected on a human level first and then again like you'll get recommended they'll get recommended you know that they're you know just a good person and that's really what it comes down to like are you a good person do I want to know you and then it's like from there it's like oh great and you're also really versed in this other area that maybe we could collaborate. I'm a collaborator. So for me, I like to know people that do lots of different things or lots of people that do different things, however you want to put that, both really. I think it does serve everybody to have a wide sort of mix of of uh, just a variety of people you can kind of approach that you feel connected to and vice yeah, versa. I don't know. How do you feel about like, I, I, I find that's one really hard thing for me in L.A., I, 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 that doesn't happen for me. I don't like. It's very rare that I meet people that I want to connect with, or you know, I don't like. Even if I play a gig, usually the people I'm playing a gig with, they just kind of do their own thing. They come in, they play their gig, and they leave, and they don't linger. And there's no camaraderie, or you know, there's no, there's no place where you kind of just. Like, if I go up to someone after they played, I go, good job, and they say, oh, thank you, and turn away, and that's the end of the conversation, you know. I don't feel like it's – it's an odd place for me. I don't – I yeah. think it might be like I don't – how I'm used to doing that doesn't work here, I guess. I don't know or I'm, I'm – but I don't – I don't have a community, and I don't have – like, I have a few people that I, I know, um, but – it's it's hard for me. I don't I don't I don't feel it's as easy as you guys are talking about. It, I don't go out and I don't I don't have collaborators. I don't have a list of people that I I could call. 
I don't I, like I I generally stay at home and I write songs and do my own thing. I don't really meet other people, and then when I play a gig, and I do meet other people, they're not they're not the types of people that I'm going to collaborate with. They don't, you know, I don't know. It's a weird thing for me. It's I very mean, odd. But I think that's also like, I mean, I'm sorry for your, I, I really do feel bad that that's your experience. Cause it's, yeah, that's, that's awful when you meet another artist and they're just not like, kind of like respectful or just kind and like Yelp, I'm like, I'm sorry. Um, but I will tell you that they're, that's not everyone. I promise you that's not everyone. Like, that's not everyone that's playing in L.A. It might, well, sorry, like, I think that's just my experience in, yeah. in L.A. And, um, but, you know, that's, you know, and then you get into the habit of, um, you know, not making the effort because your effort has been kind of shrugged so many times. You just kind of go, well, I'll just go play my gig and then, you know, go home. And, yeah. and that'll be that, you know. And uh, like, and, and then you do when you... Um, as soon as you go outside LA, like when I was in Utah, I fucking met loads of people. So then you kind of, because for a while you kind of think, oh, maybe it's me, you know. And then, you know, you go to a different place or a different uh, thing and you meet, meet loads of people and then you stay in contact with those people. But I think specifically in LA, for me, nope, just doesn't work for me, you know, just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I find that interesting because I know, like, you know, a lot of, a lot of the music gigs happen in Hollywood, right? And, like, I don't know that I have a ton of luck in that very, like, microcosm of a city if I were going to be only spending my time there, if that's where I'm spending most of my time. I think that there is a difficulty in that that specific space because there's – everyone feels like everyone's watching them and they have this, like, ego image they've got to put up. And I think people put on this air and these walls around themselves sometimes – in certain parts of town if they think that they need for whatever reason they think they need to because you're right like we met in utah and i met some other great connections there and they live in la they live out here too so it's like they're la people why does that venue change the way we interact you know it's something which is something i i said to you actually when we were out there i was like isn't it odd that you meet all these la people and we're all kind of cool yeah how come we haven't met in LA? And I, like, I'll even say, like, even when I was getting my flight home and I was just sitting there waiting for my plane, I just started talking to this dude. He was sitting there and he was, we were just chatting about guitars. And then he invited me to stay in his house in Park um, Parkview uh, when I go back. And all oh. this, I'm kind of like, that's really cool. Like, I mean, wow. you know, and then as soon as I come back into LA, I'm back into this kind of cut off kind of thing where I just don't meet people. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. I, so, and it's very, especially for be, me being Irish, we're very chatty. So it's very weird. I don't know. Right. I guess I bring up spa- like specifically where as well, because, um, you know, Kyle, you live in Pasadena and I used to live in Pasadena. And I noticed that I have a much easier time or had, I'm not there enough now to really compare it in this space of technology we're in right now where everybody's on their phone constantly, where I'd say five years ago, that wasn't exactly the case yet. But people used to talk to me so much to the point where I couldn't get work done. Like I was just like, can't you see I'm reading? Like (laughs) I'm actually, I live an hour, like, please leave me alone. (laughs) But it it would happen a lot. And And you're a girl. I am a girl. That's true. Make that clear. I mean, we've talked about this where I have no problem also talking to, like, you know, starting a conversation either if I feel like I want to. But in in this part of town, I wouldn't necessarily experience that. Like, where I live now on the west side, people are more anonymous here. I mean, I have the advantage of having grown up in California. So I'm also drawing from a long sort of history of establishing myself here as a human, like as a person. So I'm reconnecting with people that have grown their careers and I've grown my career and now we're in a space where we can work in a professional way that didn't exist before. So that's something that, you know, you have to factor in as well that you may not be able to factor in until you spend enough time in a a space sort of growing these relationships through school or through other communities that may have nothing to do with what you're doing now. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. I think um, it's a different beast. I mean, like, like, I know where I'm from, I'm used to, like... Like, I would, I would just hop on a bus, 
go into town in Dublin and literally have no plan and know that I would bump into people. Right. You know, or you, you know, you could go into a pub and you could just sit there and someone would just chat to you. Now, that does not happen here ever. For me, anyway, as a dude, I don't know. You know, I don't go. I don't like nobody just talks to me anywhere. But nobody just comes up and starts talking to me. That just, and then I don't do it either now because I just gotten used to not doing it. It's the weirdest thing. Mm. Yeah. I have a little bit of the opposite experience, and it's probably I get it that mine's probably the like minority of the situations. But so the studio that I work at is in Hollywood, and my musician, my, like my music people. The, the people that I've met with that are, like, truly, like, now family are are in Hollywood. It's it's a little, I, I, like, I, I don't, like, I don't disagree with the fact that, like, it's a different, it's just, a, LA's just a different type of city. Like, it's a little different, like, but it's a major city, so, like, to take that into account, and I'm, you know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with an LA, because it's got so many great things to offer, but I also think it's, like, there's plenty of people feeding into the like it's it's very it can be very isolating. It's a city that can be very isolating because you have a bunch of people who are trying to work on their thing also and like they've got so much going on and it's very competitive and so everybody's just trying to scrounge and just trying to keep like, everybody's looking this way and they're not really kind of tapping into other things. So it makes sense how if you leave to go to Utah and meet the same people in a different city, the energy's a little different. But I also think that it's, you know, that we as human beings can be a little bit of a change in in just who we want to present ourselves and who we want to be and how we want to put ourselves out there. I'm not saying that it's easy, especially in the city, to just start up friendships or, like, meet somebody and start up a conversation and they don't think, like, that you need something or that you want something. But I think it's also, it's to get those calluses on and just say like the whole city is kind of like this is also very defeating and you're probably missing out on opportunities of those people who who are like genuinely here and that who who may be like your dude or your tribe and like to kind of just block yourself out from everybody not to meet those people is I mean that's not it's not great yeah so, that's a good point Kyle yeah definitely there is a moment where you go, am I blocking myself? You know, have I become one of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of it's got to do with it as well. It's a very transient city. And you, sometimes you spend a lot of time building up rapports with people and then they just disappear and they're gone. Yeah. You know, and I know that's the case for me. I, like at one point I had a lot of, a lot of people here. Well, most of them were European, and most of them have left since, you know. And then you're kind of back to... I often find, like, there's a few times I felt like I've gone back to square one in the city, you know. Mm. But uh, one good thing that comes from that, you do end up having a lot of, you know, a lot of friends around the world. That's kind of handy, you know. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, no, it is... Certainly, uh, it's it's, it's an odd place. um, But, yeah, I I think uh, it's a hard place to network, I or else it's just not my type of place to network. I don't know. I haven't figured out if that's the case for everyone. For me, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that being said, like, I know that you have a lot of connections from your UCLA experience. But that's a good good example. Like, I had, I had, like, there's two people, I think, maybe two people left in LA. And I, you know, there would have been a few hundred. <laughs> you oh, know? wow. That's how many people have stayed, two Wow. That I, two, maybe three. Yeah. Wow. You're right. That's right. something to factor in as well, depending on where people are from and how long they stay. And a lot of people move back home. Yeah, they, they do. They are like, I think this... a lot of people come here with some kind of like time yeah. limit on themselves where they yes. they say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in L.A. for one year. And, you know, <laughs> which I think is, you know, hysterical because one year is nothing in L.A., you know. Oh yeah, that's like a whole nother can of worms, right? Like the illusion it it is of making it, the illusion of Hollywood, the illusion of the industry and having an artist career. Like maybe we can talk about that next time, just the illusion of what it really takes because that's right up our alley. Like that's what we're breaking down, right? Like what it really means to be an artist. And it's true. 
people go home and people show up, you know, shiny and bright eyed. And they're like, somebody told me I should be an actor because I'm attractive. And here I am. Give me a job. I, 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 it's, 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 it's hilariously funny how cliche and often that actually does happen. Like It is often. You know, you, you wouldn't think in this day and age we're all connected and it's to, such a cliche thing and it's been covered so many times. And it just happens all the time still. Like, yeah. you just see people behaving that way. I mean, good you know, for them for coming out anyway to see what happens. But I think it's just uh, it's a mindset that either shifts or doesn't shift. You either get really disappointed and it pushes you out or you get disappointed to the point of reality and then you go, okay, what do what really needs to happen for me to achieve my dream? And what really needs to happen for me to go through this process? Do I want to go through the process? Like it's very much a moment of truth, right? Like what is it that I really want? Am I here for the right reasons? Is it more use more is it better for me to go home and and figure out who I am? <laughs> like did I come here for the right reasons, you know, and those things can change, right? Like you can, I mean, we all talked about our second lives in the first episode, like everything changes. I have less problem with people doing that than I did as a young actor being in classes with kids that just had all these expectations that were so unrealistic. It was almost painful to be around, but you know, you get over it and you're just like, oh, they just don't know yet. It seems to be uh, very common with in, in the actor sphere very much i think so yeah and it's now i have a totally different like take on it where i just want to mentor everybody <laughs> just want to yeah. be like let yeah. me show you what i've learned and you'll be okay you know but before it was like get so out of my we, town remember we met that guy remember we met that guy uh, yes! at the red carpet thing and we oh, took him to toy and then great. we just started saying oh, prepare yourself do this don't no you know don't oh, like God. you know the, we're trying to get him ready for L.A., you know, this yeah. is what we've learned. This kid came you know? to L.A., he was brand new, he'd only been here for a couple of weeks, right? He was really brand new, he was living in a hostel. A few days, I think, my God, like, not, Maybe. not that long at all. I, I want to say, yeah, it was a short amount of time, very short amount of time, and he was, didn't have a place to live yet, he was living in a hostel, and we ended up taking him to dinner, and just, like, mentoring him and giving him advice and like sending him on his way like I tried to get what him a was job his plan? like what was his plan he was a really smart kid this kid was bright like he was he what was he had like a well he was like a tap dancer as well right like he had some other very classic yeah, classically trained young man very rare kid but smart really really smart and you know what I find interesting about that isn't it peculiar that we were at that event and you and I immediately gravitated towards him. Yes. Isn't that, that's, that, that is like pretty much what I've been just talking about. It's like, yes. it's like, it's very rare. But then when you do see those people, you kind of just gravitate towards yeah, your, yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's energy. It's, you, you know, you're open to a certain type of energy and then those things attract. That's literally how it works. That's how we make friends. It's, you know, we know who to, that's how we know who to speak to and who not to generally. And you're right. Like, we picked up on that, and so did he. There was this moment, I remember it, there was this moment where we, all three of us sort of opened up to each other, and, like, he saw us and we saw him, and we were like, come on over, and we ended up, you know, hanging out with him. If you had to be a different kind of artist, what would it be? If you had to. <laughs> good, good. So what you did there. <laughs> hmm. I think I would be, um, I, th I think I would actually go into, like, now that I've uh, been looking at, I never used to, I never really understood fashion. I still do not understand fashion. But, like, now I think, like, now that I'm starting to, like, I'm kind of trying to learn um, sewing and tailoring. Mm. Um, and... It's just, uh, I just find it fascinating. So I would totally, like, it, I would, I would love to go be a nerd and, like, study fucking fashion and, like, angles and lines and like, fabrics. Like, it's just fascinating to me now. So that's my answer for today. I would, I would go into fashion some way, shape, or form. Wow, that's awesome. I would have never yeah. guessed that. Neither would I have, neither would I. Until today. Ask me tomorrow, though. I, I get you. Things, <laughs> things change, right? Constantly like that. 
Yelpy. I don't know, to be honest with you. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe acting. I don't. I don't. I don't think I. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, there's a few things that I would um like to be able to do, but I. Let's say but I don't, if you could be skilled in it. I don't know. Maybe something like uh, one of my friends. He does a lot of um special effects, and you know, um, he does like. I always was interested in that, and he said he was. I would always go to his. He he was doing like you know he's doing it in college or whatever. I'd always always go to their shindigs, and they'd all have cool special effects things, and they'd be like, "Oh, that's so cool." Nice. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if I'd like to do that. Mm. Certainly, no. It's a hard one. Maybe acting, because acting seems like something my family have done quite a bit. As well as music, and and I'm not really good at it. So, but I kind of enjoy it when it's not mm-hmm. go for, you know, go for interviews and stuff like that. When it's just acting, I quite yeah, I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, that's a good answer. Percy, um, I guess I would choose singing. Like if I were better at it, if I if I felt like. It was a feasible thing for me to pursue. <laughs> like, I just... I have my own, like, weird head games about what that is. But I I love... I love singing. I just wish I was better at it. So I would you be have? that. I'd be a rock star. Nice. You can... <laughs> you can be a rock star right now. Thank you. <laughs> I remember when I was in, in school, that's exactly what I said to my career guidance teacher... And I was like, when I was like 18, she's like, what do you, what, what do you want to be? And I was like, I want to be a rock star. <laughs> Fast forward 20 plus years. And you and are, still, are. I'm still not. Yes, you <laughs> are. That's true. You are a rock star. You totally are. We're all rock stars. Thank you so much for listening from all of us here at Permission to Play Podcast. We hope you invite a little more creative space and permission into your day. We'd love to hear what you think by leaving us a review on iTunes. Please subscribe and share, and you can also find all of us on social media. Till next time, and don't forget to play.